Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, the comic shop, uh, the retail comic shop. So as I've talked about in the past, uh, I've had a, a decent amount of comic shops. Uh, one's open directly, one's I funded, one one with a partnership, if you saw that video. Um, and th the interesting thing about comic shops is that there's actually two factors to your success. One of those, of course, is the product. It's comics or whatever you happen to be selling. If you go back in time like two years in this video, and few people actually do, but if you do, um, I was giving the advice pretty strong. Actually, more than two years. It was pre-COVID. Ah, geez, how the time has flown. Anyway, the uh, the advice I was giving is like, you got to diversify. And the general business rule of thumb that I gave others is don't let new comics be more than 20% of your intake of your business. Even if you're in an area where new comics do great, it's still not a good idea to tip yourself so heavily in that direction. So you can do 25% new, you could do 25% back issues, you could do 25% merchandise. I mean, Funko is, is not anything I would put into that 20%. I'd have it be a larger kind of lump of, of just general pop culture items. But basically, diversify. Diversification, this is a new idea. If you are investing in any kind of uh, shares or, or funds, they'll tell you the same thing. Diversify your money. The reason why you want to do that is kind of evident right now as we're going through a semi-recession. It's a good idea to have a lot of different things in play. If you have all your money invested in one particular area, it gets hit, you get wiped out. So diversification is safety. So in comic shops, um, and, and again, this is true of, of anything, you want to have multiple bets. So if one thing suffers, the whole thing doesn't go down. So the products are important in the store, but that's, that's one part. The second part that's equally important is just the overall trends of retail, where the shop is located. Uh, you, do you have good traffic? Is it car traffic? Is it walking traffic? Do certain things, uh, do, does a lack of a bus route hurt your business? I mean, it, it depends on what your business is. A lot of places that sell food, like fast food places, uh, live or die based on convenience of being able to get off the road, get in, get out. That's why you'll notice that fast food places that kind of exist on a one-way street or tucked into a corner, they don't do very well. Because a lot of people are just, they're built by convenience. If it's a little bit harder to get in someplace, they just won't. And brick and mortar retail is hurting. It's it's shifting in different ways. I mean, if you went to uh, if you went out shopping during Christmas, you certainly noticed that, or sorry, pre Christmas, Black Friday. Depending on where you live, it certainly is a bit of a nightmare. But I'll tell you, twenty years ago, Black Friday was a was an absolute beast. There would be lines getting you into the mall. Today, it's crowded, but a lot of that shopping is being done on Amazon. So if you're going to open up a comic shop. You have to consider the retail factor. Now, why I mention this is a lot of comic shops are closing right now. And people are, are somewhat, uh, somewhat, somewhat not. This is where two things can be true at once. As I've mentioned, if, again, if you have a long memory, comics don't have any buzz right now. There's not a lot of attention. There's not a lot of people like saying, you've got to go in and read this issue. You've got to wait. I mean, there, there was a time certainly in the 90s, some other times when I had a shop where I would go in the morning to open up the shop and uh, there'd be a line, people waiting to get in. Death of Superman was one of those. Uh, the X-Men, when they, Jim Lee, Chris Claremont, that issue was one of those. There's a couple like that. Uh, Captain America getting killed during Civil War was like that. There were, there were, there have been times when people line up to get into the shop and there's, there's nothing going on right now that remotely would create that you know, event from happening. No superhero dying is going to move the needle. None of them. They've all had a turn at dying at some point or another. It's not going to happen. If Marvel pulled out all the stops and said, this is the death of Spider-Man and Peter Parker is going to die and they were somehow able to get some media attention and convince people, you might get a lineup. In a couple places, you might have had some people line up uh, who knew comics to try and buy that Tom Taylor Superboy coming out issue because they thought it would be a good speculator flip copy. But it, it's nothing like what it was. The buzz is not there. But the other thing that is problematic is just retail. Brick and mortar retail is hurting. And when you see a lot of these comic shops closing, sure, the product is partially responsible. But it's not 100% of the reason. The other part is retail is hurting. It's, it's hard to get things going. And on top of that, and this is an ugly truth that retailers just often do not want to accept, the, the retailers do a very, very poor job of perfecting their interests. 
they don't modernize. They don't look to get mailing lists. They don't look to offer, uh, you know, online or phone orders. They exist like an archaic institution. Several of the places that do mail order comics, so like we'll take your credit card number and we'll put it in an Excel file somewhere on the store laptop. And then every now and then we'll, we'll go down to the post and throw it in a box and mail it to you. That's, that's a, you know, the better half of comic stro- stores. I, I know a ton of different comic owners and I, I like a lot of them are wonderful people, great salt of the earth, you know, good, good people. Um, but generally speaking, a lot of them have very little interest in upgrading. A lot of shops look very similar to how they did 20 years ago. If they were open, you have a wall of new comics, you have boxes of back issues, you have very narrow aisles, kind of stuff crammed all over the place. There's a certain look and a feel, and it's not really evolving. So when you see these articles saying comic shops are closing and you know, this shop needs a GoFundMe in order to stay alive, that kind of stuff. I mean, sure. Uh, the buzz of comics would definitely help, but that's 50% of it. Yeah. You know, so you basically can place the blame on, you know, they're not being exciting product to sell. You can place the blame on the comic shop, not diversifying their business so they could survive kind of the downturn of the new comics. And you also, in many cases have to put some of the blame in the comic shop didn't do anything to really protect itself. Look, there is enough volume in comic sales as they sit today even if you're talking kind of mainstream books, not getting anything fancy, no manga, no YA, no nothing else. There is enough business that if you go into it and you make sure that you've got a mailing list and you make sure that you offer, you know, services that way. I, one of the, you know, there's a, a shop that for a period of time, uh, was situated very near the base down below Tacoma in, in Washington state. And it, it basically was very clever. It had a good, easy entry. It kept its stuff clean and everything else, but it w- it made it really, really simple for people on base to go in, sign up for comics and then get the comics mailed out. And if somebody got deployed, they did a good job of, of either holding onto the comics or getting them there. Or, I mean, hell, I, as I recall, the guy had a really clever idea. It made me mad because I didn't think of it where if you subscribe to the comics, um, you could, and, and you got deployed, you could pay a little bit more and basically the shop and then the, the person getting the comics split the cost of the digital version. So the person got deployed, they got, you know, they, they basically got the codes mailed to them so they could, it, it was, I, I don't remember the details, but it was clever. Basically it was a store that was hustling to try and make sure that it's retail brick and mortar business was protected by attaching itself to an audience that, you know, it likes comics, needs something to do. And that's clever. You know, I, that's the kind of stuff that keeps shops in business. And if you look at the shops that are thriving, and there are some that are definitely thriving, you'll notice they've got lots of different things for sale, lots of different options. They've got modern systems. They usually have a website that wasn't built on, you know, GeoCities back in, you know, 1993. Um, it, it, the, the shop looks like somebody gives a shit about it. And I think we're going through this big reckoning right now with all retail where, you're either modern and you're appealing to today's shopping audience, the kind of people who do get in a car and go to a store and go in. You either have a good, compelling product, good store, good everything else inside of it, or you don't. And I, again, I, I think um, it, right now, the dialogue as I'm seeing it is, hey, the mainstream comic business is uh, not putting out good product. People don't want it. And that's why comic shops are dying. And again, I think that is true. I think there is not a compelling buzzworthy product out there. Totally agree. But again, I think that's just half the story. The other half of the story is complete lack of modernization. And so there's, there's a lesson I think for, for everyone in comics, whether you're a creator, whether you're a publisher, whether you're a retailer, whether you're doing your stuff on crowdfunding, take a look at what you're doing and ask yourself, does this feel like a modern service? Are you behaving and and dealing like the people who are doing it the best? Not not in comics, just overall. If you're doing a crowdfunding campaign, what does your page look like? What does your marketing look like? What does your advertising look like? Does it does it seem like kind of 2023 20, level material? Or does it feel like you are kind of stuck in a time machine? Hey creators out there, a lot of you sell original art. What's your website look? If you do have a website, 
What's your website look like for that? Is it modern? Does it look like a, an auction? Does it look like something good? If it, if it doesn't, look, go to Fiverr, go to some of these services. You could pay a hundred bucks and you could get somebody to design a website that looks kind of classy. You could use one of these uh, web services that you could do it like Wix or something like that. You could, you could, there's a lot of different options for you. You don't have to have a, I mean, hell you're in the arts. There's no excuse for you having like orange text on a yellow background. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you know, well, some of you know who I'm talking about. There's a, there's an artist out there. I respect and admire their webpage is times Roman and comic sans fonts in, in orange with a yellow background. It is absurd. This guy's an artist and you can't, you can't even read what they're doing and they're trying to sell art for hundreds of dollars. And you know, I talked to the guys like, I'm not selling much art these days. I'm like, cause your site sucks. It doesn't look like you're doing anything modern. Please. Uh, yes, of course. I think we need some compelling storylines. We need buzz in comics. We also just need basic care and feeding of this stuff. We need it to, to look modern. I would propose this. I think a lot of comic shops that are going out right now, I would be willing to bet it's a lot less the new drop in new comics revenue. And it's a lot more a constant slow bleed over the last five to eight years of just having, just mismanaging your business. Because I say this because there are several comic shops out there and, you know, a couple in particular where the owner is doing well, turning a profit, making money, making money off of new comics. Guy's doing fine. His business runs like a modern business. Everybody who in this, everybody in the comics retail business I know who actually is taking their shit seriously and, and has their store clean and is looking to kind of make their store look and operate and feel like something current, they're not doing bad. Some of them wish they were doing better, but none of them are, are dying. And, uh, yeah, just, just something to consider. Hell, there's a, I saw a comic shop, uh, I just visited south of Fort Worth in Texas and went out of my way, drove down there and looked at it. And, um, it said it, it had a few new comics, not a ton. It had a bunch of games It had toys and everything else. But the, what struck me was the store was laid out really nice. They positioned themselves in between a bunch of restaurants and, uh, it just, it, it had activity. It had life. People were going into it and, you know, I talked to the owner. Owner's like, I wish I was doing better, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. I can't complain. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing well. The guy is driving an Audi. I, I, I don't know. It, 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 it wasn't bad, but the distinct difference was it looked like a store cared for. So again, not disagreeing that the content isn't what it needs to be. The new comics is, is are not burning themselves off the shelf. Definitely a factor, but it's not the only factor. And I suspect it's not even the major factor for a lot of these shops closing. A lot of st- shops that struggle, they can pivot into games. They can do a lot of other things. The fact that they're, they're still closing, I, it, 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 you know, you got to question the business sense. Anyway, my opinion anyway, thanks for listening. 